When I was in Las Vegas teaching at the University of Nevada, um, four times a year I would drive up through central Nevada and would pass a sand dune that sat out in Amargosa Valley. I would stop, get out of the car, and look at it. My wife would be like, what? I said, you, you can't, it's so beautiful. A photo, a video, a painting, you never do it justice as standing here and taking it in. And she said, I think you should make your own sand dune. So for four years, I was building sand dunes in galleries and museums. And I realized I was, I was a landscape painter. But all the great landscape painting has been done. It's kind of like Michelangelo and marble. It's over. It's so good. Same with landscape painting. But if I could make my own landscapes wherever I want, that's how I got into making lava. And then I went to the Earth Science website and found the first faculty member that had lava next to their name. And it, it was how I found Jeff. Bob came into my office one day and decided, told me he wanted to make lava. And uh, I mean, I thought this was kind of crazy to begin with. I didn't know what this guy from the art department was thinking about. But very quickly I realized that he knew exactly what he was talking about. And so immediately I saw the potential for doing scientific experiments, uh, for educational opportunities for our students, and for outreach as well. So we started by doing just uh, 25, 30, 40 uh, kilogram um, melts inside in a little furnace and then I bought this one up in Canada for a couple thousand dollars it was scrapped and rebuilt it and um, killed it the first time I used it because I didn't understand how to use it and then it took three years to figure out how to melt rock. We've overcome a lot of obstacles as we've gotten this project going. Uh, one of the big ones is, is just learning what the right size material, uh, gravel type material would be to melt, uh, how to add it. You know, it's really very much like learning to cook a particular dish, and Bob has just mastered that over the last six years. There was no information on how to do this. And then I found out uh, the hard way that there's water locked up inside the, the basalt, and it, it, figuring out how to melt this stuff without killing the furnace because it overflows. Finally, we just found it was a matter of just being patient in time. Lava flows are just sort of nature's experiment. They're all unique. We can't control the composition, the temperature, anything really. Uh, we just have to observe what nature gives us. Here, we can predetermine what's going on and we can really learn what factors cause all these different, these diverse shapes and forms that you see in the lava flow. Here, the lava came out of the trough, flowed out from underneath that area, through a tube system all the way down the slope, and came out to make this big lobe down at the bottom of the, the lava flow. In other places, you can see these wonderful regular folds, curved folds that develop as the lava meets resistance as it's moving down slope and kind of crumples up, kind of like an automobile running into a wall. I've learned a lot about how lavas change from beginning to end and how different, different variables during the eruptions can change the final outcome. On a really shallow slope, we may get lava tubes versus if we have a really steep slope, we'll get things like lava channels where the lava forms natural levees and can flow very quickly, very rapidly, high velocity down the slope. So a big surprise for me today was seeing how a lava tube develops. You know, it's something that I have seen in the field, but I have not seen it form. And one thing, you know, is learning on a textbook how that happens. Another one is seeing it happen within 10, 15 minutes, so that's been amazing. When we do these types of investigations, uh, we have to reproduce what we're doing here. This is just part of science, demonstrating reproducibility in our data. On the other hand, in art, uh, you know, every artistic creation is a unique piece, and it's uniqueness, not reproducibility, that's rewarded in art. As an artist, I, I rarely have to repeat anything. 
So this thing of repeating stuff over and over and over, it's, we already did it, let's move on to something else. But, and I've learned, so I've learned discipline in that way. And we've, learned, we've had to learn how to work with each other. I mean, he's as passionate about, his, about all his research as I am about being an artist. And those two things match up. It's fascinating for us. Uh, it's fascinating for our students to see how differently we think about things that all professors aren't just sort of uh, come out of a, some sort of cookie cutter mold and uh, they have very different things to offer them. Different ways of learning, uh, different perceptions of this, exactly the same physical phenomena, for example. Working with Jeff and Bob has been a great experience. They let me have the freedom to do what I, I need to do, um, but they, they keep me on track and keep me guided to where I need to go. Uh, I've learned a tremendous amount since I've been here, and largely it's been due to their guidance. It's been especially exciting being able to bring university students down and K-12 students to see a real lava flow. We send students home with samples of the lava so they can remember the experience, but it's pretty special to be able to see molten material, 1200 degrees centigrade, flowing in, in this fabulous exotic way and turning into a rock, basically. I mean, you just don't get to see that every day. This is the most counterintuitive material I've ever, ever worked with. And it's still, every day I learn something else about it. I want to put, make uh, these lava fields in places they don't belong. Inside a building, in Central Park, out in the middle of the Nevada desert. I like the idea of a geologist a couple thousand years from now walking out there saying, this doesn't belong out here, but this is a lava flow. If I don't do anything with the lava, and we don't do much research, but we get a few more scientists out of it, we win, right? Totally.